let's build StarkNet with Nethermind. So Nethermind is a company that started around six, almost seven years ago. Uh, for the last seven years, we've been building on Ethereum and everything around Ethereum. So we've been building Nethermind client as Ethereum core developers. Uh, in and around 2019, we started building more and more and more with StarkNet ecosystem. So we've been with StarkNet ecosystem from very, very early stages, early times. And we've built a lot of cool things and we've worked with a lot of you. And we are happy to see you succeeding with all the projects that you're launching with us on your own. And let's review some of that journey. Um, so one of the things that at Nethermind we consider to be I was like, the, the most important building block is the internship program. So since around 2019, I think as well, uh, we've had almost 400 people uh, going for the internship program at Nethermind. Uh, this internship program lasts always uh, three months. It is designed to allow people to travel freely between all the projects that we are building, and there is quite a lot of this. So nowadays, Nethermind is 200 people in 50 countries around the world. Uh, we have probably around 100 projects in different ecosystems. We're building in multiple technology stacks, uh, from the front-end technologies all the way to the back-end core engineering, security, and so on and so on. And much of this is on StarkNet. So like significant part of the Nethermind team builds on StarkNet, uh, which means that uh, nowadays, the internship programs that start allow people to, to learn Cairo, to learn technology stack behind a StarkNet internals. And uh, lots of people who are at Nethermind and are building with StarkNet now used to be with uh, our internship. And you'll see that some of, the, some of the CEOs of the ecosystems are former interns at Nethermind, some of the, the builders, engineers, researchers. So definitely one thing when you want to build StarkNet with Nethermind, very often this is considered to be the beginning of the journey for many people. Join Nethermind for the internship and have that freedom of exploring uh, and, and building with whichever team you want to travel to. Also one very important thing is that um, if I think about Ethereum, uh, sorry, Nethermind beginning uh, in Ethereum ecosystem, we were starting as a bootstrapped company with two, three people at the beginning and we were building in the shadow of the Colossus like consensus, right? So Ethereum started with uh, some like big companies that co-founded it, started with the with lots of token allocations, uh, building a lot of stack. And I think that we always had an opportunity to build around and be supported by companies like consensus. And we knew that it was extremely important because when you're a builder starting in the ecosystem, then you think like, okay, so where do I get funding from? What if someone steals my idea? What if I start competing? How do I even build around the companies that have that many people, that many projects and so on? So, well, we went through the journey and we know that it's important to not feeling that uh, it's, very, it's very tough to be around. So we would love to make sure that you feel the same way with us in the StarkNet ecosystem, the same with Starkware in the StarkNet ecosystem, and then you find that space and you find the support. So the encouragement is also to get in touch with our internship program managers and say, hey, we would like maybe your interns to work with our projects. Maybe we'd like to know what your interns are planning to do next. Maybe this would be your future hires or future co-founders. Um, this would be fantastic for us if it works this way. Also for any products that we'll be presenting here, if you think that you can have some integrations, collaborations, this will be one of the most important things for us to build the StarkNet ecosystem, let it grow, let it succeed. Uh, we'll, we'll succeed if StarkNet succeeds, it will succeed for sure, so in the, uh, seeing all the fantastic events in the recent months happening around the world. Um, we do slowly work more and more on building community. So there's a gaming night in our uh, Nethermind house, StarkNet house in uh, London. We want to uh, do a bit of counterbalance in a positive sense for the Paris on the other side of the, of the channel. So make sure that both London and Paris together are this extremely strong hub for, uh, for StarkNet and that we can try to keep up with the competition from Istanbul. Uh, one of the entry points for StarkNet for many uh, people starting to build is Voyager. So Voyager Explorer was built by 
uh, Nethermind's team, and uh, it keeps expanding. And nowadays, obviously, we are overwhelmed with the request for changes, modifications, bug fixes. Uh, we'll be happy to receive even more, and the Voyager team probably will be happy to hear that, that I want to throw more work there. Um, I hope that this will stay a gateway and is something that you'll feel like very much welcome in Starknet and feeling happy that you have a solid tooling around uh, when you're deploying the first contracts and when you, explore, when you explore the code base that you verified on Voyager. Uh, the same for Remix plugin. So we've built a plugin for the Remix IDE uh, for quick testing and deployments, experimentations with uh, your web browser for learning and deploying with Cairo. Uh, the other tools that we built are a bit more below. So uh, this is building the uh, tools for actually running the protocol. Juno is the client for, uh, for Starknet. Uh, nowadays in version 0.7.3, so we're adding support for all the latest improvements to the Starknet stack. Uh, we'll be continuing to work on performance. When you think about Nethermind client journey, Nethermind client was built, is being built in C Sharp and it's been developed over six years now and uh, grew in the Ethereum ecosystem to one of the leading uh, client implementations for, for Ethereum. Uh, we want to make sure that it's the same with Juno and once again to underline the collaboration, the atmosphere in the Ethereum community between the core developers building all the five execution clients, five consensus clients is very positive in the sense that we're meeting together, we help each other to solve the code, pro uh, code problems, uh, we share the source codes, ideas, fixes, and so on and so on. Uh, and also the collaboration on the meetings, uh, the public meetings on the Ethereum core dev uh, calls is very, very positive, it's a good mood. And I think it will be the same, we'll try to lead the same approach uh, of collaboration and understanding uh, each other's challenges in StarkNet. What we're working on now uh, with Juno and again in collaboration with the teams for uh, Pathfinder, Equilibrium and the Papyrus in Starkware, uh, we're working on the P2P so you can actually start syncing the uh, StarkNet independently, build the actual networks and synchronize, well, we worked on a few synchronization solutions. So first of all, the P2P improvements in performance in synchronization, uh, the, the commissioning of the feeder gateway, uh, building together the stack of the Voyager Explorer, Juno, uh, collaboration between different clients, uh, and also synchronization from L1 for the requirements of the L2B dashboards, right? So how the community will see us, uh, how is StarkNet seen as a rollup, as a maturity of the rollup? Uh, we think that is very much our responsibility to push it through all the requirements and stages. Uh, we launched recently the StarkNet RPC service. So you'll be able to connect to the uh, free limited RPC open endpoints and also expand over time to the uh, fully productionized uh, support level of the infrastructure for RPC. Uh, we have a lot of experience building infrastructure for Ethereum. We're operating uh, across our companies and joint ventures, so tens of thousands of Ethereum validators, validators for other, um, other chains as well. Uh, and now we want to build that robust infrastructure with the monitoring support, responsiveness, and, and treating you professionally uh, to StarkNet. So you no longer have to feel that it's all a bit uh, shaky that we're still building, that you have to uh, the opportunity to focus on all the challenges of, uh, of your own vision, products, and ideas that you have to experiment with. We build a lot of the Golang stack, so uh, we know that the uh, StarkNet Rust ecosystem is improving very fast. We want to, this, uh, we want to do the same with the, with the Golang stack. We keep uh, maintaining, we, we took over the maintenance of StarkNet Go from uh, from the previous maintainers. Uh, we built Cairo VM in Go. Uh, Juno is written in Golang as well, so for Golang devs, I think that the uh, uh, full set of tooling is available. Uh, we'll, again, keep improving performance here, uh, keep chasing it, introducing, uh, hopefully, this very positive competition that kept making all the, uh, in the past, all the Ethereum uh, client teams to keep improving over the last two years. I think that uh, maybe it's, it's worth to mention that 
I think again 2019, and there was a core dev call in Ethereum where we said that it will no longer be able to sing Ethereum uh, on the normal nodes. We were reaching levels of 24 hours. Uh, the state grew five or six times since then, and, and we are syncing it nowadays in something like a one hour uh, on very, very strong machines, which means that the state is five times larger. We no longer say that it's impossible, and we improved it like 20 times uh, the, the sync time. And this is all because there were five teams that were pushing the boundaries, bringing new ideas, and uh, sharing how things can be faster and showing that impossible is possible. We started doing more protocol work related to not only StarkNet, but generally to all the L2s. And we want to share some good ideas and breakthroughs from other L2s, like think of Optimus, Arbitrum, uh, experimenters like Tycho, Scroll. Make sure that we're not staying behind. Very often we are so, so busy looking at how StarkNet is developing and what challenges are in StarkNet that there is no, no time to understand deeply other stacks, right? So we were talking to, uh, to all core devs in the StarkNet ecosystem, and sometimes it's very hard to find answers to the basic questions, like what are really the fee levels in other ecosystem? How is the decentralization progressing in other ecosystems? So we'll do a bit more research here. We will start sharing more ideas, uh, pushing things related to decentralization, fee markets, uh, proposals that are maybe sometimes a bit more controversial we're discussing. So ask yourself a question, what if StarkNet was a base roll-up? What if StarkNet went with proof of governance? How you would deal with MEV on StarkNet? So we have a lot of experience with this one and I hope we'll bring uh, you to all of this research and you'll get excited about all the research ideas. Um, we built the team of Cairo Security uh, auditors. So we did the Cairo 1 audits, we did formal verification. Uh, that team was learning from the very beginning of Cairo 0 as a team that went through the learning the ecosystem together with the early project deployers. Uh, we went through our challenges of understanding the internals of StarkNet, uh, the workings of Cairo, the modifications of Cairo and nowadays uh, we feel very confident that we can support you in any uh, large-scale deployments on Cairo. We start exploring and doing more and more fun around gaming. Again, mostly supporting other ecosystems, so Dojo becomes a very, very uh, well-adopted well -adopted, uh, framework for gaming. Uh, we built recently the StarkNet uh, Unity SDK and integration for uh, Dojo great challenges, opportunities for gaming on StarkNet. So, again, hopefully, lots of support from the mind. Collaboration, as mentioned, we participate, organize lots of uh, spaces, talks, panels, where we hope to build that trust between all the teams, being together on stage, building together, co-organizing the events, hackathons, and so on. Uh, particularly, I think you can reach out to to Yorick uh, Shalakins, to Antonio Sabato, building communities in, in London and around the world. We try to do a bit of intercontinental collaboration. We spend a lot of time uh, in Asia, in Korea, in Japan, in Singapore, uh, connecting teams from something that's a bit more of our home base in Europe, um, and trying to make sure that teams have better introductions, connections. So this is a set of the Telegram channels where we, where we talk to you about the projects that we maintain. I expect that those numbers will have all three digits after this talk. We built a lot of uh, documentation elements, so we supported uh, Cairo Book, StarkNet by example, uh, I will continue building this one. So probably also the translations will be coming. Some of you were reaching out recently about translations. So yes, please reach out and you'll get support from us. I sort to feel like much of the translation nowadays can be automated, but also there's this fun of uh, reviewing that and propagating with local communities. Uh, we want to support you in communities in Turkey, in China, in Korea, in, uh, in Spanish-speaking countries. So. As I mentioned, we are in 50 countries around the world. Very often there is someone from Nethermind locally with you uh, who can help you get connected. 
Thank you so much. Uh, please reach out to me for directly for any questions and discussions. And if there are any questions from the audience, I'll be happy to answer.